Hey everyone, today I'm showing you a way of uh, making honeycomb-like cities with simple um, polylines that you can easily, polycurves that you can easily move around within your Grasshopper script. And also with that, updating the geometry as well and having the script working. This is a great way of um, doing quick urbanistic sketches or ideas and uh, you don't want to uh, extrude all of those things at the single hand to have like a proper um, way of see looking at it but just having a more um, homogen kind of uh, look at it. So we start with a new script and the first thing well we have our isocurves here in Rhino that we can just like create like this with curve and um, what we're going to use is we're going to use a new tool called, well, not new, but it's called Geometry Pipeline. It basically, instead of using the traditional way of using geometry or curve and selecting set multiple curves, click the curves, enter. Now we would have the curves in Grasshopper. But what we are going to use is Geometry Pipeline and we just simply click here on this little curve button, double click. And uh, we now have the same curves in here. What this helps us with that is if we, for example, want to duplicate a curve, like this one over here, it automatically shows up in the Grasshopper uh, file as well. So we don't need to always reapply like this, set multiple curves, click, enter. Um, no, wait. Set multiple curves, click enter. Yeah, it, it's a way like a, it's a way better workflow in a way. So um, the first thing is what we're gonna do is we make um, we basically have let me sketch this out for you. Um, we're having a we're having this curve, and we want to define a rectangle around it. And um, on this rectangle, uh, we're basically putting like a lot of those grid structures everywhere. Like, well, it's something really honeycomb, but it takes a lot of time. And what we're going to do is we are um, checking if those honeycombs are inside and the other ones will get like uh, deleted out. So we will only will deal with those. And in the end, when we have that, we will be um, we will be extruding those as well into the Z direction to give it a little bit of depth and like see how the script actually performs. So the first thing is we're going to do is yeah we need to basically define a point right here. So in this we're gonna. Uh, extrude out the um, honeycomb or whatever um, type of uh, grid you want to take on it. So yeah. So the next thing we're going to do is we are taking, we're making a bounding box that takes basically all the different, um, all the different pole lines we have. If you take it per object, it is uh, there's always like single um, bounding box always around the single curve. But what we want to do is make it for all of it. So we can just right click it and click union box. This way we have a um, unified box around it. And um, next things we're going to do, we're going to explode it. So uh, no, we're going to be deconstructing it, deconstruct BRAP or maybe beer up edges might be better. And now we have the edges around this just created box. And um, we have those four lines basically around here. And uh, we're going to uh, explode those now, yes. And we will, this will give us the, uh, each of those points at the edges. And so we wanna take this point here and it should be the with the point with the index uh, of one uh, of zero, like this one. Wait, and yeah, vertices. 
Uh, you also need to flatten it in order for it to be working correctly. So if you see, if you're going through the, um, through the list item component, we are going to take exactly this point here in the beginning. And as you see, if we move it along further, it will select a different point, but we want to get this point. So we will make the grid out and like expand it out here. So right now we have a point and we will use the command. Um, well, it is under curve. No, whoopsie. Oops, not <laughs> with under a uh, vector grid and then hexagonal. So the plane that we're going to use is the plane that we have here. And uh, the size is irrelevant for now. And the extents are relevant though. So um, in order to get the correct extents, in order for it to be covering the whole area, we will need to um, just copy this list item. And then we just use uh, the segments like one of them. And what we're getting here after flattening it, we're getting a, um, a length of of one of the edges. So we're going to uh, use curve length in order for uh, the um, length of the curve in order to make a decent amount of um, honeycombs. So we just put this into the X and Y of uh, the cells. You can also um, play with the grid size as well, whoever um, some caution might be um, because you need to take care that the small, the grid size, the uh, less likely it is, it is in there. So I would keep it at one for now. Um, next thing we're going to do, we will check if any of those grid middle points, because we have the um, points of the grid centers is actually inside one of those curves. So we're going to use, um, always forgot the name of this command point region uh, point inside, inside curve I oh, am yeah. pointing curves so those are the points we're gonna have and the curves of those the ones we have in the beginning and this, this gives us now a huge list of um, should be I know, yeah, the relationship, yeah. Uh, there are, uh, is a huge amount of zeros and twos. And basically it shows that if it's zero, it's outside. If it's one, it's on the edge. And if it's two, it's in the inside. So we're going to um, make a dispatch pattern that basically sorts the that, that laws in the right direction. So you want to uh, um, have the ones outside here and the ones inside here. Or maybe the other way around. We will see in a second. And um, the next thing, so we're going to, we have those and we use a Boolean to simply use those zeros and ones and just transform them into false and true. Use this bit pattern and we are using um, the cells as the list that we want to dispatch. So let's see if I'm right or wrong about this one here. And in order for the, the dispatch pattern still shows both results, but we need to just like take one of them and then there we have a better result. So yeah, so this one shows us the result with the grids um, inside the curves and the other one would show us the grid outside of the curve. But we're only the ones interested inside. So we're going to use those. And uh, what we now have, we have um, certain uh, certain geometry in it, and we are we want to extrude it, but we just don't, don't only want to extrude it like in a basic way. That so they're all the same, but we want to have like a certain variety of it. So we're going to use series, and we're going to use a list length, very important command, uh, and a lot of often used. At least I often use it. And we are going to um, increasingly um, use uh, dependent on how many are in there. 
it's gonna be increased further. So like every one of those, <laughs> well, round hexagons gonna get increased further and further and further. So the more there are, the further uh, it goes upstairs. Uh, it goes, it's, it goes, <laughs> the more there are, the further it goes into the Z direction. So now we have our lists and we have our base, which would be um, this one here. We need to also don't need to forget the Z component because you need to know in which direction it goes. And now it will take a little bit while because it's uh, extruding all those different uh, things. And now we see, hopefully not being too laggy. Yeah, now we have our hexagonal say things. See right now they're hollow still. So what I would post that you're using a boundary surface and just use them on the, on the basic mesh or on the basic um, hexagon that you have and create a surface around it. And then as well, move it up to the Z direction as well to basically cap it off. There's also a command called cap. Um, but the problem with that is it might need to take a long time to determine uh, where to cap and what to cap. And it is from the processing um, speed better to do it this way, basically. So yeah, so the next thing, so you have your very nice geometry. The next thing you're gonna do is bake it. And um, <clears throat> in order for it to have a more clear view, we can just uh, disable the Rhino preview, uh, the Grasshopper preview, and just take a look at it in Rhino and admire it or not. If you're unhappy, obviously, you can always go back to Grasshopper and change the shape of it. So yeah, hope you guys enjoy and see you next one.